Assalamu alaikum and good evening. You're watching Witness and I'm your host, Katrina Hussain. We had promised you earlier that we were going to bring you a two-part uh, exclusive coverage of the floods in Sin, but events regarding the relationship between Pakistan and the United States has compelled us to postpone that special coverage to tomorrow and today we'll be focusing entirely on the situation regarding the absolutely tense relations between Pakistan and the United States. Uh, you may have been following it in the news. I can just give you a quick update. The whole crisis was triggered when Admiral Mike Mullen told a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing that the Haqqani network was a veritable arm of the Pakistan ISI. And the chorus was joined by other leaders in the United States, including the U.S. Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, who then went ahead and said that, Pakistan, uh, that the United States could take operational steps against Pakistan, but did not define what those steps could be. The American demand, of course, be escalating now from do more to a do it now or else statement. And of course, the target of all this is the Haqqani Network. The Haqqani Network, which we will describe to you in detail in this program about who they are and what exactly the problem is. This latest round of U.S. Pakistan accusation hurling comes in the wake of two attacks. One particular one at the U.S. Embassy and the ISAF headquarters in Kabul and an earlier attack on the Intercontinental Hotel in Kabul. Both attacks now being attributed to the Haqqani Network by the U.S. government and claims by the Americans that the attackers were in contact with Pakistani ISI personnel prior to the attack. These charges have been vehemently denied by everybody in Pakistan, from the President and the Prime Minister, down to Foreign Minister Hina Rawani Khar and the Chief of Army Staff General Ashraf Parvez Kayani, all of whom have rejected these charges. The question remains, what does it all really mean in terms of Pakistan's national security, American intentions, and what we need to do about it? Allow me to introduce the guests who have already joined me. My first guest here in the Karachi studio, where I'm doing the program from today. My first guest is Mr. Ikram Segal. He is, of course, a defense and security analyst, well known to viewers of Witness. My second guest, joining me from Peshawar by video link, is Mr. Iqbal Zafar Chagra, a senior leader of the PMLN, a former senator. He joins me by video link from Peshawar. And I am joined by Brigadier Retired Said Nazir Mohman. He joins me from my Islamabad studio. He is a defense analyst. And shortly, I will be joined by Mr. Shah Mahmood Qureshi, an m &A from the Pakistan People's Party, Pakistan's former foreign minister. He will be joining me via audio link from Multan. But my first question will be to Mr. Chagra over in Peshawar. Mr. Chagra, um, the situation that we are seeing right now, in a nutshell, dangerous and tense. What do you think Pakistan's response should be? Well, uh, thank you, uh, Katrina. Before I go on to the real issue, uh, I just uh, heard these uh, news in the headlines about the tragic accident uh, uh, of a bus uh, in which students were traveling and six students died. So I was highly perturbed to hear about this uh, um, uh, um, uh, very uh, serious accident. Uh, let me express my uh, deep sorrow uh, and uh, pray to Allah that uh, uh, may Allah give uh, courage to the um, parents of uh, the students who have uh, died in this accident. Uh, we share this grief with them. It is very painful to uh, hear all this. And uh, now I will come to the main uh, question and the issue. Well, uh, Katrina, no doubt uh, the situation prevailing uh, with the uh, uh, statements given by the uh, United States uh, are really disturbing and uh, the entire nation is uh, absolutely uh, in a sort of uh, uh, disappointment as to uh, what has happened uh, suddenly when uh, the United States of America who has uh, in the past uh, used uh, Pakistan as the frontline state against um, uh, war on terror and uh, uh, we have been uh, fighting a war uh, uh, on the uh, uh, instructions of uh, the United States of America on which we have always uh, uh, expressed our uh, um, uh, reservations and if uh, you remember in uh, uh, many of your programs uh, if you go back and uh, look at your previous program that I have been attending with you 
in almost each and every program, Katrina, I had uh, indicated that uh, the um, uh, Parliament of Pakistan, as soon as it was restored, the first demand which was made by uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif was to uh, 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 convene a joint uh, session of the Parliament in which a resolution should be um, passed uh, uh, jointly by all the parties uh, uh, as to how should we uh, uh, tackle this uh, war on terror. And uh, uh, it was done, uh, the uh, parliament session was uh, convened and uh, you would uh, remember that uh, a 14 point resolution was drafted and uh, passed unanimously by the Pakistan uh, uh, parliament uh, and uh, I had ev all the time, every time, every time I had insisted and I said, well, that was the best road map to adopt that uh, um, uh, resolution, the 14-point resolution. And uh, if we had adopted that and if we had uh, implemented that, today things would have been totally different. We wouldn't have faced this ugly situation which we are facing today. And Katrina, uh, it will take time, but I want that I should uh, read out that 14-point uh, resolution which I am carrying today, so that the nation also knows what was done, what was passed. Can you give us a basic well, highlights? Because I, we don't have time I, I, to read out all 14. I will, I will, we'll leave that I will, for another day. I will give you the most. I, I am. I'll give you the most important one or two uh, points of this, which were the first one which I always insisted in your program, that we need an urgent review of, of our national security strategy and revisit the methodology of combating terrorism in order to restore peace and stability to Pakistan and the region through an independent foreign policy. Remember, independent foreign policy, a very important uh, uh, part of this uh, first uh, 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 portion of the resolution which I have uh, 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 just read out. And then yep. another very important uh, 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 point was the challenge of militancy and extremism must be met through developing a consensus and dialogue with all the genuine stakeholders. Now, if, yep. you, if, if we had gone according to this, and uh, even the third one is, uh, the fourth one is very important, that Pakistan's sovereignty and territorial integrity shall be safeguarded. The nation stands united against any incursions and invasions of the homeland and calls upon the government to deal with it effectively. That Pakistan's territory shall not be used. Do you fear that Pakistan's territorial integrity could be now breached or be at stake, given the language that we are hearing from the United States? Well, the language uh, that uh, we are hearing, uh, definitely, we should be concerned. But uh, one thing I have always said, that by the grace of God, United States of America, in spite of all these threats, will have to reconsider everything and every point which they are making now because it is Pakistan which is being uh, targeted and by the grace of God the Pakistani nation and uh, the entire uh, um, uh, political parties you will see in uh, any time of crisis or whatever challenge Pakistan faces the nation stands wholeheartedly be behind the uh, armed forces and the government of Pakistan so the time has come, but now it is, it, is, it, it, is, it is a test for the present ruling party. Now they will have right. to uh, 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 take uh, some effective steps and very carefully. This is a very sensitive issue. Right. I tell you, we should okay, do thank you, all Mr. that is in the interest of Pakistan. We should not be emotional. Agreed. We should not take any um, uh, uh, emotional steps. But at the same time, let me tell you, we have called, uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif has called a meeting of his uh, senior uh, party leaders tomorrow, which is meeting, and uh, okay. our formal uh, statement on this, of course, will come tomorrow. So I am giving you the general background. And you will, of course, be attending the Prime and, Minister's, uh, any, uh, and, uh, any you will be attending the Prime Minister's conference. Uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif will be there.
Well, uh, uh, Katrina, uh, Katrina, let us, uh, uh, Katrina, let us see what happens uh, in the meeting tomorrow because okay. we have again, okay. we have again demanded for a joint session of the parliament and we feel right. that the parliament which we consider as supreme should be actually first of all involved and let them come up with something which should okay. be solid like we did it in the past in 2008. I think the time has come once again that we go back to the parliament and uh, once again for, uh, uh, at least give an opportunity to the parliament to uh, uh, come up with some uh, um, uh, uh, useful uh, solution or resolution on the present crisis. Okay, thank you Mr. Chagra. I believe Mr. Shah Mahmood Qureshi is also on the telephone. Uh, Mr. Qureshi, if you can hear me, welcome to Witness. I'm sorry, we have, don't have a link to Shah Mahmood Qureshi. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Segal, you heard, of course, what Mr. Iqbal Zafar Chagra had to say. A lot of people are right now asking the plain and simple question, if the Haqqani network is so dangerous, why didn't Pakistan do something about it earlier? And my question to you is, is the Haqqani network a threat to Pakistan's national interest? Well, Katrina, first of all, I think uh, what a lot of people do not know is really who are the Haqqanis. Absolutely. Uh, Haqqanis are not a Pakistani tribe. They are from the Zadran tribe, which is uh, mainly in Paktia and Paktika province. They are Afghans. And Afghans. And, yeah. and now the province which has been carved out of Paktika, that is Khost. These are the three provinces that the uh, Haqqanis are there. Here, because during the uh, Soviet war in Afghanistan, during that time, this uh, Haqqanis, of course, used uh, areas in North Pakistan as sanctuaries and which from the, they, they took from the Waziris and they've got excellent relations with the Waziris. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the question is, do they operate from Pakistan? Certainly, I'm, I'm sure that they have bases in Pakistan and there is no doubt but there, there would be sanctuaries because of the porous borders which are there. In Between Pakistan. the two countries. Yes. Which but, incidentally could be blocked by either side. Yes, but one thing which people do not know is the Zadran tribe, the Haqqanis have got distinct features, which, which, and you know, they wear clothes, which, which distinguish them from all the other Afghans. Mm -hmm. And if they were, if you could take a Zadran uh, tribal into Kabul, he would stand out okay. straight away. He would have to change clothes, change, right. and features would still stand. In fact, if their turbans are long turbans, and like. the point which I want to make is that, you know, the Haqqanis have never engaged in war against Pakistan. Right. Yet they are. There's no doubt that they are at the moment uh, defiling the sovereignty of Pakistan by being in Pakistan and acting against a Pakistan ally which is the US. Exactly. Certainly they are taking part in an insurgency yep. against the United States and that is a fact and uh, you know the United States has got every right uh, to be displeased about it. But on the other hand, their main bases are in Afghanistan. Yeah. Why isn't the United States using the one moving national army yeah. and moving against and them in against them yeah. ISAF. They should have a major, they've had operations near Kandahar, they've had operations near Herat, they've had operations in Hillman, all over the place. Why not in these three provinces? Yeah, they've stayed away from yes. them. And in fact, Kunar yeah. has become a venue for where we are being attacked, yes. uh, Kunar province of Afghanistan. Let's go over to Islamabad now, where I'm joined by Brigadier Retired uh, Said Nazir Momen. Uh, Brigadier Momen, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining me here today. The real question now, sir, is that what options are available to Pakistan? Because in many ways, the aggressive American posturing has backed the Pakistani establishment into a corner. Any action they take now will be perceived as having caved into American pressure. What options does Pakistan have? Uh, thank you, Katrina, for having me on the panel. Uh, the, the question which we have asked is what options Pakistan have got? Uh, well, the options are on the board, and uh, they have been uh, across the board discussed by the Corps Commander, as well as uh, conference, as well as the civilian leadership. Uh, the basic question comes that we were allies. And from the alliance, we have become strange bedfellows. And from the strange bedfellows, we have become other, either foes or friends. Now we have to choose. This was what has been offered to us. The threat perception which has been analyzed, that is that whether the, I consider it that the threat is limited. That is limited in space and time dimension. 